Star of the Unborn by Franz Werfel, 1946. 30 years later, this is the only paperback edition in English. The paperback edition has amazing wraparound cover art. On the cover, it's credited to Zafran. In ISFDB, Internet Speculative Fiction Database, they identify the artist then as Jean Zafran. You'll also notice here that there are only two English publications of this book. In 1946 from Viking Press, a hardcover, and this edition in 1976 from Bantam Books, priced $1.95. Translated from the German by Gustav O. Arlt. It's 627 pages long. This was a rare find for me in a dusty bookshop in St. Catharines, Ontario. The reason I picked it up for $3.50? Well, I'd heard about it from Matt at Bookpilled and Stephen E. Andrews of the Outlaw Bookseller. They were quite taken by this work. But before we get to my review of it, let's take a look at Franz Werfel himself. Franz Werfel. Born September 10, 1890 in Prague in the Czech Republic now. Died August 26, 1945 in Beverly Hills, California, USA. Werfel was an Austrian-born novelist, playwright, and poet whose career spanned World War I and World War II. He is primarily known as the author of The Forty Days of Musa Da from 1933, a novel based on the events that took place during the Armenian Genocide of 1915. And... The Song of Bernadette from 1941, a novel about the life and visions of the French Catholic saint Bernadette Subaru. In World War I, Werfel served with the Austrian-Hungarian army on the Russian front as a telephone operator. It exposed him to the brutality of war on the front line. In the summer of 1917, Werfel left the front line for the military press bureau in Vienna. After the war, in 1930, Werfel journeyed to British-ruled Palestine and he had an encounter with the Armenian refugee community in Jerusalem. It inspired the novel The Forty Days of Musa Da, which drew world attention to the Armenian genocide by the Ottoman government. In Vienna, there is now a memorial to Werfel. The inscription says, In gratitude and respect, the Armenian people. In 1933, Werfel was forced to leave the Prussian Academy of Arts, his books were being burned by the Nazis. He left Austria itself in 1938 and went to France, living in a small fishing village near Marseille. After the German invasion and occupation of France during World War II, Werfel had to flee again. He eventually settled in Beverly Hills, California, where he published The Song of Bernadette in 1941. The novel The Song of Bernadette was made into a film in 1943. Just before his death in 1945, he completed the first draft of his last novel, Star of the Unborn, which was published posthumously in 1946. Franz Werfel stars as a character within the novel. He refers to himself as F.W. Werfel is brought back to life, and we see in the 600 pages of this novel three days that he spends in the 11th cosmic capital year of Virgo, about 100,000 years from now. This reminded me of Gulliver's Travels, or as Matt says, it also reminded me of R.A. Lafferty's Past Master. We have a historical character brought into a future world. But in Star of the Unborn, it is the author who is the protagonist. We visit the astral mental world and we take visits to Venus, Mercury, and Jupiter. As far as I can tell, this is a futuristic fantasy bringing satire to the situations of Werfel's life. Now, I found this book difficult to read. I read about half of it and then skimmed through the second half. I'm not sure that most modern readers would enjoy this book. It is a challenge similar to reading much older novels. Let me read a sample for you. An old proverb says, Veritas venzit, truth is victorious. Unfortunately, this adage is an idealistic overestimate and misjudges life's realities. By the end of the days of mankind, of course, truth will have conquered. Until then, however, the opposite is usually the case. Victoria verifacit. Victory makes truth. Every historical era reflects the face of the most recent victor. 
You probably recall even better than I that human superstition of that time made the happiness of nations dependent upon two economic systems that were both wrong. Both led to serfdom of the individual, one under the heel of the ruling classes, the other under the heel of the ruling masses. It was the most stupid either-or in world history, which always develops by virtue of such alternatives. How could there be peace in my old age as long as two systems existed side by side that hated as well as envied each other? I find the circumstances around this novel fascinating and the attention that it's receiving. If you're looking to buy it online, you might be surprised how much people are charging for it now. But if you have a dusty old bookstore in your community, you might be able to find it in the science fiction stacks for just a few dollars. It was a lot of fun to find this book and to start to read it, but I had difficulty enjoying the story. If you're looking for a more enthusiastic erudite review, I would suggest going to my colleagues Matt at BookPilled and Stephen at The Outlaw Bookseller. So for the history of the book itself, I would just say this is definitely an 8 out of 10, but the reading experience itself, not so much. So let's put an asterisk beside my rating for this one, but I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Until this book is reprinted, you're only going to be able to find Viking Press's hardcover edition from 1946 or Bantam's 1976 paperback. I'm very curious, has anyone read this book? Let me know your thoughts below. Until next time, keep reading.